Hi, Ria. Before we start this audio, I just wanted to let you know very quickly that at the end of this audio, there is a trailer for my Patreon where I do exclusive storytelling, narration, voice acting, all that good stuff. If you're interested, check it out. And if checking it out interests you in my Patreon, there will be a link to it down below. Enjoy. Welcome back to another chill audio where I just talk about whatever it, no that's that's basically it <laughs> I just talk about whatever <laughs> oh I'm not gonna talk about the weather though there's a good chance that I'll talk about food however so uh yeah more than likely just random stuff though oh my goodness mm. you know I uh <laughs> <laughs> I record these with uh, the AC or the heater off, which is not really bad, but damn. Whenever it starts to get to like 90 and 100 again, ooh wee, that's, uh, that's gonna, that's gonna suck. But thankfully I don't have uh, too much to record that requires perfect quiet. Although, I do get stories 20 60, 120 page stories that I read for hours at a time. But it's all a part of the sacrifice. For the career, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which I do really enjoy, my, uh, my storytelling. I do. I really do. It's one of my favorite things, especially the, uh, the audio engineering part. <laughs> yeah. It's a beautiful day today. Starting to get warm again already, but that is Texas. But that means that the birds are out and chirping. <laughs> Life abundant and everywhere. I wonder if you can hear the bird. There he was. Then again. There's another one that's answering that word, but you definitely won't be able to pick that up, that's for certain. I mean, this mic is good, but it's not that good. <laughs> yeah, so pretty. <sighs> you know, we got, uh, we got cardinals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I don't know. There's a red one. <laughs> so it's either a robin or a cardinal. I don't know. It's a red bird with an orange beak. And the females are brown, so whatever that is. Also, definitely blue jays, which, I mean, that's kind of hard not to get right. So, I'm definitely right about that. I know that for certain. Oh, yeah. Speaking of which, by the way, I, uh, <laughs> I used to have zebra finches. Uh, when I was a kid, like, uh, maybe 10? I, th I think it was probably 10. It might have been 10. I don't know. I love to watch Ben 10, though. That was, that was very fun. Uh, but yeah, I had two of them. And I don't remember if I was aware that they were male and female. But uh, after a little while, they had a shitload of eggs. So many eggs. And then, of course, my parents made me get rid of them. They were so cool. Probably the most different pet that, that I had. Yeah. Yeah, definitely the most different pet that I had for certain. Because everybody's had, like, cats and dogs. And there's a fair amount of people who have birds. More so now lizards. Lizards have been uh, steadily becoming more popular. But, uh, yeah, no, I actually did. Like, all growing up. You know, the family. I mean, if you don't know somebody who's had some kind of pet... Uh, in one form or another, it's kind of strange, actually. Because everybody loves pets. And come to think about it, I, I don't think I've ever met anybody who hasn't had or grown up around pets of one kind or another. I don't think I have. Hmm. I'm actually going to think about that for a second. Mm, they definitely had some. Both sides of the family did. 
I remember those little guys. I think they did as well. I mean, I also have a big family on both sides. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, <clears throat> numbers does help. Numbers do help. Numbers do help. Yeah, there we go. Oh, man. I'll tell you what, though. I uh, can say from experience that staying up until 5 a.m. back to back for a good few days in a row is not advisable. It's not the best idea. <laughs> oh. oh, man. I feel like ice. I mean, it's a good thing I got, you know, uh, I'm kind of thick, you know. It's a good thing about that. But, uh, yeah, that doesn't help at all. When you're feeling eyes, it doesn't matter how good your eyes looks, unfortunately. Ugh. At least it's just being tired, though. Oh, nothing I'm unfamiliar with. But, man. <sighs> Making everything drag, though? Yikes. <laughs> But that's why we're relaxing here, right? <laughs> that's why I'm in bed and you're comfy. Right? Oh, also, do you sit like Spider-Man sits on the sides of buildings? <laughs> Some of you do, don't y'all? Some of you do. Some of you do. You can't hide what's inside. <laughs> uh, don't worry, I... Well, whenever I had a uh, recliner or gaming chair, I would too. I would too. Either crossing my legs or having one just thrown out to the side or uh, up on the bed. Even though the bed was mad close to me and I was parallel to the bed, so my leg essentially had to be 90 degrees uh, up. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I know. I've definitely, I've definitely said it like, I, I've definitely sat like I have no bones. <laughs> I don't know why it's comfortable. Uh, in, yeah, sometimes it's only comfortable for like a minute or two. Other times... You can fucking fall asleep like a pretzel. It's very strange. I don't get it. I don't understand it. There's, I know that there's some neurological science behind it, but I don't have it uh, to look at currently. Yeah. <laughs> I really do love the winter. So calm, silent, cool. I can actually wear layers without sweating an entire bucket's worth of fucking liquid. <laughs> uh, I do like the spring a lot, though, because of how beautiful it is and, well, all the life everywhere. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. But yeah, yeah, the winter and the spring... I'm not exactly a fan of summer, being from Texas. And if you're from any place as hot or hotter, eh, well, I would be surprised if you didn't share the sentiment. Although, there are people who, uh, uh, cool off a lot easier. A lot easier than I do. So there's that as well. And there's definitely people who love summer, but yeah, man, oof. <laughs> Tell you what, if I could live in a place where it was, like, 50 for the high <laughs> and 20 for the lows at night, I would be mighty fine. I'd be so fucking good. I'd be so fucking good for, like, half the year. And then the other half of the year, like, 70, 80 for the high, with a low of 57, 60, 62, something like that. Like, fuck yeah, dude. Mm. Mm -mm. 90s being unheard of. You best believe I'd be fucking catching me a one-way trip. Oh, baby, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <sighs> oh, uh, by the way, despite my sniffing Tourette's, uh, I like hats. I like I like to have 
hats. I don't have very many because I don't wear them very often, but there are two that I have. One is all black and honestly extremely fucking dirty because I worked on Dusty a lot of the time with it. And then I have my other one. <laughs> uh, possibly my all-time favorite one. It's a hat from the uh, from the town in Georgia where they shot Vampire Diaries, right? So, of course, they have a Originals Vampire Diary little shop. And the city center was insane. <laughs> like, the city was already like that, right? And do you think that uh, the cities, uh, or the towns, the towns, I should say, that, uh, that, that you see in TV shows, like, they're all just staged. All the buildings are either CGI or they're just, Cardboard, right? Cardboard cutouts, and then they, they go and post it, or pre-edit and fuck around with that, right? <sighs> yeah, no. <laughs> it, it, it just been like that. And, uh, yeah. It's, it's just like that out there. It just naturally is. <laughs> and that's why they chose to go film out there. Because it was already set up. <sighs> they didn't need to spend the extra money in, uh you know, construction, or to hire the people to uh, make the fake buildings, or the scenes, anything like that. All of the buildings exist, or existed. The Salvatore house was uh, torn down, I believe. Unfortunately. Gorgeous place. Uh, but the main thing, though, is that all of that's real. Like, I, I went there with my bestie, in person. Oh, they have a gorgeous little fucking coffee shop, too. Golly, those... Oh. Those, uh, <laughs> those pan dulces, the, uh, the sweetbreads, the treats, the pastries, there we go, were so good. Oh my gosh. They were, they were pretty damn good. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm not a coffee drinker, but I will eat a sweet pastry for breakfast and be happy. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I cannot emphasize enough how if you go to Georgia, to Georgia, and you fucking go to that town where they shot most of that. It just is the way that it looks naturally. There's no fake stuff. And you might even actually, uh, <laughs> like we did. And this was unplanned, by the way. We had our little tour and, uh, we actually noticed through the, uh, through one of the, what, what is it called? I don't know. Anyway, when you got like a bunch of buildings next to each other, and then there's a road that cuts through the buildings in between that. We looked down that, and uh, we saw one of those one of those lift vehicles where, uh, I don't know what it's called, but imagine like, like in the movies, window cleaners for skyscrapers, right? So imagine that, except instead of on cables, a thousand feet in the fucking air, you had that same platform, that was on a, uh, essentially just a, a platform with the exact same shape. Just a rectangle that can drive around a little bit. And then it just goes up and down like that. We saw one of those and, uh, some other stuff off in the distance. They were already filming some other shit there when we went last year. And I was like, motherfucker, damn. <laughs> They be using the fuck out of that town. It's no wonder it looks so pretty. And you would think that, like, there would be ass loads of traffic, right? Like, just shit loads of traffic. But, there wasn't. And that was, like, during when they were doing uh, Vampire Diaries Originals tours out there. And there was no bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. In fact, like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> our our uh our little tour guide bus fucking thing just parked on the side of the road and it was no issue like there was that little fucking traffic and i don't know if it's when we went but it was like in november no no no, no. uh late october late october yeah uh so i don't know it was during the holiday season i i don't know if that particular uh town specifically or that county or city that we were in just doesn't have a lot of traffic <laughs> or because so many production companies do 
uh, film out there for, you know, like the little slice of Americana, uh, just purposely, I, I, I don't know, fucking pay the governor or something to reroute traffic all around that area so that way it doesn't go through. No idea. I wouldn't put it past them, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's how you'd expect. <laughs> Uh, which is, which was the most wild part. Oh, I, uh, what do you call it? We ate at the, uh, not, not just a little coffee shop, but the, uh, <laughs> the cafe bar thing, grill, whatever. Uh, shit, I can't remember. It's been so long since I watched it. Ah, come on. It's something grill. I know it's something grill. Fuck. This, I don't know. Y'all know probably know. But I know the place, obviously. And if you guys have seen it, you know the place too. But uh, we ate there. And, you know, I, I know a lot of people would think that, oh, you know, if you go to a place like that, you know, a town where it, it, it's all gimmicky, because like, oh, hey, we're known for filming all these shows. You would think that, oh, like the food or the people or whatever, it's just low quality, right? Like, you would think that they would just bank off of the fact that, like, hey, we're famous. Ha <laughs> We don't need to do anything else. Uh, no. Like I said, the pastries were fucking delicious. And I think I got a... Oh, yeah, yeah. I got a burger. And I think some curly fries. And it was phenomenal. Now, I've, I've eaten... Well, I've eaten a lot of food just over the course of my life. <laughs> uh, but I've eaten a fair amount of burgers. And that was, that shit fucking smacked, okay? Now, I'm not just gonna fucking embellish and say, It was the best burger I've ever had in my life. I was shitting, pissing, and coming on the stool. Uh, because I've not found a burger like that yet. Uh, but that... Yeah, no, that was, that was spectacular. If I'm ever through Georgia again, like if I ever go to Georgia for any reason, uh, I'm going there. So that way I can eat at the fucking grill again. Like, it's good enough for me to, if I was in Georgia, make the fucking trip there and eat several times. But, like I said, I haven't met the best, most amazing burger any human's ever eaten before. Because if I, if I had found that there, I would fly to Georgia just for that fucking burger, okay? <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna lie, though. It's, it is fucking up there. You will not be disappointed. Oh, man. So good. The food, the scenery, it was so quiet. So beautiful there. Just magnificent. Oh, uh, by the way, if you ever catch yourself driving through Arkansas, or you're about to, uh, there are far more trees and road than people. <laughs> like, it, I don't know, it, it might have just been the part that I went through, but it felt not undeveloped, but un, uh, I don't know, because I, I can't think the right word for it, because, I mean, you know, they had they had amenities, obviously, and they got cities in Arkansas, duh. But, like, I don't know, it just seemed untouched. Like, they were just swaths, and I mean fucking swaths, of the only thing that you saw, other than the occasional other driver on the road, right, <laughs> were trees, and tall-ass fucking trees, to the left and the right of you. And there was nothing else that you could see except for the road and trees, which I personally love. That was gorgeous. We did end up finding a Denny's uh, pretty soon after we entered Arkansas. <laughs> but uh, it's it's very it's very wooded out there, and I adore that personally. I love it, and I hope it stays that way. I really do. I really, honestly hope that it always stays that way. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, we were taking a main interstate. It's different from a freeway, but... I don't know, it's it's one of those just long-ass fucking roads that you can haul ass on. Um, and it was just magnificent. It was so pretty. Naturally pretty. Uh, that was actually one of our first stops, too. 
uh, when we went there. We stayed at this lady's uh, Airbnb. It was right on a, a big, big, big pond. And I say pond because lake would, I mean, you know, if you've been to a lake before, you know, that's just like massive. <sighs> but uh, it was a large body of water. <laughs> but it was so pretty. You know, we, we went out there early in the morning and we just went out there and stayed on the little dock that there was. And I mean tiny. It was a tiny dock. Um, I don't know, man. It's, it's a different kind of beauty. <laughs> like, sure, we have woods out here. Like, we definitely do in Texas. And I haven't been to all the woods, of course. But uh, definitely the nature in Arkansas. It just felt purer, I guess, because so much of it still is woodland. And up in, um, fuck, what was it? It was in, it was in Tennessee. <laughs> when you go up the mountain, essentially, <laughs> you go into the mountain areas and, uh, you, you go to the trails. Fuck, dude. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You want to see gorgeous American nature? Arkansas and the mountains of Tennessee. The Smoky Mountains. <sighs> Fuck, man. Because most people think America and they don't think about nature or anything like that at all. It's just like all business corruption and everybody's all busy and angry and ready to fight each other. But America's got beauty, man. It does. And for where I am at in Texas, I could get to Tennessee or... Well, I could definitely get to Arkansas faster. But either one of the two in a day's drive. Like if I'm fucking... Driving the whole day. Easily. It's gorgeous, man. Anyway, <laughs> you're probably asleep by now. Or, if you're not asleep, hopefully... Uh, uh, you've calmed down quite a bit from whatever anxiety or stress was bothering you. So, I will let you be, and I will let the trailer play. Winter, he was always there. Once an unnerving presence at the periphery of my vision, wherever I worked, he... He grew on me. All eight feet of him, mostly unmoving, just standing there with his fedora, big plastic glasses, and face mask. Accompanied by his black trench coat and trousers, wearing thick leather gloves and shoes much like a Terminator, or Mr. X version of Resident Evil. <laughs> Discolored gray skin would peek from beneath his disguise, except when he wasn't armed and dangerous. We pushed the cart full of mementos and keepsakes toward Jimmy's ward. Volunteers had scoured through his grandmother's cluttered basement to dig through as many things that they could to remind him of his late parents. Everything we could muster to bring his parents to him Photos of vacation trips, videos of their wedding, miniature sculptures his mother used to craft. We gave him everything but the real thing. Who are you lying to? Timmy? Ourselves? His wish was unfillable. Not even the gods, if they existed, could raise his mom and dad from the dead. They were killed by a drunk truck driver that flattened their core, crushed their bodies instantly. They died like that. The snap of a finger, blink of an eye, there was no coming back from that. The Foundation still wanted us to give it our best shot, and of course we did. Not a single wish should be ignored, no matter the challenges. Ordinarily, we'd process the wishes whose logistics we could satisfy within our own means first. But Timmy was... He was deteriorating fast. The first time he slipped into a coma, he popped back within a week. The next coma took him months to awaken from. 
and the doctors warn us that he might not come back on the next one. Which brings me to this very moment. Witnessing the languid disappointment stretched across Timmy's pallid face when we entered his ward without his parents. I sighed and signaled for Julia to help me set up the portable projector. Mr. X grabbed my hand and shook his head, a firm yet gentle grip from a giant whose massive hands could crush melons if he wanted to. For the first time, he was no longer a passive spectator. There were no words between us, but I knew what to do. I beckoned Julia to leave the room with me. Now we were the observers as Mr. Rex removed his sunglasses and placed them on the table next to Timmy's bed.